nonprofit radio coverage of 20 NTC. That's the 2020 Nonprofit Technology Conference. Of course, the conference had to be canceled, but we are persevering virtually via Zoom. We're sponsored at 20 NTC by Cougar Mountain Software. Denali Fund is their complete accounting solution made for nonprofits. Tony.ma slash Cougar Mountain for a free 60 day trial. My guests now are Lorraine Gordon and Catherine Hyde. Lorraine is principal at Lead with Heart, and Catherine is senior director of digital engagement at Enterprise Community Partners. Lorraine and Catherine, welcome to our coverage of 20 NTC. Thank you. Thank you. We're thrilled to be here. I'm glad we it worked out. Are. I'm very glad it worked out, and I'm glad to know that each of you is well and safe. Uh, yeah. in, in, in Maryland, around the Baltimore area. Um, let's get started with you, Lorraine. What, what uh, your, your, your NTC topic is, this situation calls for leadership. Uh, what, uh, what do I do now? Or, yeah, now, yeah. Now what do I do? Well, um, well. What, what is it that uh, the two of you want to bring to the leadership conversation? Well, when we planned to present at the conference, it was, what do you do? do when you're in a situation when you have an upset, you have a disruption, um, you have something that happens, whether it's trust or a project is jeopardized or something where you need to diffuse um, the tension or the upset. Um, and this is a prime one. We've got uh, the coronavirus, so That's we've got a situation. big upset. Yes. Got a um, and we could have never planned for this, right, Catherine? No. <laughs> so, our session is about how do you bring your heart and curiosity to solve a team challenge? You know, how you show up in that, what kind of insights you bring. Um, so we're going to talk about that. And Catherine's going to share a little bit about the learning objectives of what we hope to accomplish in that. Okay. Uh, you, want to, you want to state the objectives, uh, Catherine, before Catherine? we get into Sure, I would be uh, happy to. Heart and curiosity before we get there? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So we had three learning objectives here. One is to build your leadership awareness. And that is just your understanding of, of what are the components of leadership and how do you bring them forward? And a hint, it's got a lot to do with heart and curiosity. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the other, the second one is to reflect on the barriers to high performance. What's getting in the way when the, when the team isn't functioning? And one of the things we want to underscore is that leadership is something that can be done by anybody at any level. Any member of the team can step up and, and take uh, help present a, a healthier way for the team dynamic to move forward. And then we're going to help you lead, leverage some tools and approaches that would um, help diffuse some of the conflict that might arise and certainly some of the tensions that teams have, especially when they're working remotely and they don't have each other to bounce off of in person. Okay, um, let's stay with you. And uh, uh, heart and curiosity are not words that are typically associated with leadership, uh, but you're, you're opening things up. So uh, expand, our, expand our thinking. What, what, what's the role of heart and curiosity in leadership? Well, if any of you are familiar with Brene Brown, she speaks about vulnerability and how important that is to leadership. And that is your heart. Bringing your, yourself, your whole self, allowing your team to bring their whole self. And we'll talk more about this later, but the idea of, of how to listen with compassion and how to speak with clarity. And the curiosity comes from this approach that we don't have all the answers. We don't know all the background. So coming at this, coming at any situation, yeah. whether it's conflict or tension or otherwise, with your curiosity is a way to break through some of the barriers. Okay. Vulnerability is, uh, that's a good adjective. I like, uh, I, I, I admire people who clearly are, are, are vulnerable. Um, right. I think yeah. a, a good example of that uh, in leadership is uh, Amy Sample Ward's uh, yes. video that uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm getting a little teary just thinking yes. about it because she's tearful in the, uh, the video that she made. You can find it at n10.org and go to the, follow the 20 NTC conference links. You'll, you'll see the cancellation video that where she announced the cancellation and uh, was made, even made N10, N10 vulnerable by saying, yeah. this is 62%, this conference is 62% of our revenue. 
and we're not only losing the revenue from the from the registrations, but we have uh, incurred enormous penalties for the broken contracts right. with food vendors and sign vendors and all kinds right. of. So she was not, not only vulnerable on a personal level, but on an organizational level yeah. too. And, mm. and you know, you see her in you see her in that video wiping tears at least once, maybe twice. Um, I just thought I thought that was a great example of what uh, it occurred to me when you, when you said the word vulnerable. I, I Absolutely. Was, yeah, I part of that video. Well, right. there was there was one conference I was at. I mean, Amy is an excellent example of a vulnerable leader and a leader who comes with curiosity and yeah. and heart. Um, I remember there was one conference where you could actually get a button that said, "I made Amy cry." <laughs> <laughs> Because she wants to hear your story and she's there with you in such a real way. Yeah. So it's an excellent example, Tony. Yeah. That's great. out at, at a conference. That's great. They were, they, you know, <laughs> you got buttons for your bling, you know, there was a button there that said, I made Amy cry. Oh, oh okay. Right. Lorraine, Lorraine, what do you want to add, please? To I was just going to and... say, but um, um, vulnerability is like a, a, a key competency for yeah. leaders. It makes them humane. It creates a bridge of trust. It says, I'm in this with you. Um, it's where leaders have an opportunity to really dig deep when it comes to emotional intelligence, which so many studies have been shown to demonstrate that leaders who have strong EQ are leaders who are far more productive on all kinds of levels, generating revenue, bringing teams together, creating wonderful cultures. Um, but vulnerability can be a little scary. It's scary. If you are not vulnerable personally in your personal relationships, it's hard to do that at work, you yeah. know, because there's so much we, we cover up. And essentially what we're covering up is our heart. But that's the very thing we want to sort of open up a bit and connect with others because we all have it. We all have a heart and <laughs> we're all looking for an opportunity to connect. And it's a powerful tool um, being able to lead with heart uh, when you can do that. So this is a situation that certainly calls for it right now because we are vulnerable on so many levels of safety and health and well-being and we're, con we're thinking about our families, our communities, our neighbors, our workplaces. So whether we want to be vulnerable, we are at least inching toward that space whether we want to or not. Yeah and you know so I think it's a great opportunity. There's so much thinking that uh, misplaced that that showing vulnerability is a sign of weakness. Yeah, and it's I, think not. It's, I think it's just the opposite. I think someone who's vulnerable exactly. is, is, is showing, exuding confidence and strength exactly. that they exactly. can open themselves up that way. I think that's a sign of enormous confidence and strength. You know, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. And as a leader, I have had my best relationships with leaders who have been vulnerable with me. And when that has happened, I give them my very best. Yep. I give them so much more than I would a leader who really is just trying to just tap whatever, you know, not tapping my full self. And so as a leader, I've, I've aimed to do that too, to really bring my full self and my vulnerability and the sense of trust, which is one of the things we're gonna talk about, trust being a real bedrock in all of this, trust and vulnerability when you're in a situation of disruption. Yeah. So it changes. It changes us. It changes the people around us. It can actually change the whole vibe in, in a room as a facilitator. I've seen it happen. I call it sort of dropping the water line. When somebody is vulnerable and they drop that water line, you can feel the shift inside the room and it's palpable. So it's a powerful tool. And I, Catherine, and I would just invite leaders to go there. Yeah. Yeah. And it breeds vulnerability. If you can bring your whole self as a leader, it allows your team to bring their whole self. Yes. And it generates an incredible amount of loyalty and willingness to go above and beyond. Yeah. Um, I'm going to recommend someone to you and, and a book uh, that I just, I, I interviewed him and I, I do so many shows. I can't remember if, <laughs> if the, this show has gone live yet, but his name is Jamie Burse, but it's spelled like hearse with a B. So Jamie, B-E-A-R-S-E, -E, he's the CEO of uh, Zero, the end of prostate cancer. Uh -huh. And they have an organizational culture there, which is, which is what his, um, oh, you know, I don't, he hasn't written a book on this. It's just, no, I'm sorry. I, I interview a lot of authors too. Yeah. Um, 
he, he hasn't written a book on organizational culture, but the, the culture that he's created at, uh, at zero, which is a pretty large organization. I mean, 25 or 30 employees or something like that um, mm -hmm. uh, is, is exactly in line with what you're describing. You'll, yeah. you'll be interested in. I will um, check them out. I, 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 and regrettably, the only resource I, I know where he talks about organizational culture is my show. So, but I'm not trying to get, <laughs> I'm trying to get two more people to listen we'll to my show. We'll be happy to listen but, to your uh, show. We'll <laughs> listen to it, Tony, okay. on your show. Um, <laughs> he's, he, and he has, um, they, they show up with um, uh, HH, uh, uh, bedrocks of the culture, uh, HHS. Um, humility, is it humility, hunger? Yes, not honesty. Uh, I'm, they're, they're honest people, but it's humility, <laughs> hunger, and uh, I can't remember what the S is. Uh, I don't want to misquote it, but HHS, bedrock of, and they have something called um, vulnerability in trust. So that they trust each other to be vulnerable. They open up their meetings with, they spend five minutes going around the room, putting a spotlight on someone else who uh, ex exhibited uh, either uh, nice. HHS, this humility, nice. humility, hunger, and oh. smarts, man. Oh, shoot. But you know, <laughs> so you put the spotlight on someone else. You go yeah. around and the spotlight on someone else. Um, thinking like um, silence is dissent. Bef when the leader says, when the leader, whoever's leading that meeting says, you know, are we ready to go on? Everyone has to affirmatively, right. yes, yes. And if, yeah. if someone who's, who's quiet, then that's assumed to be dissent. And they're asked, are you ready or do you have an objection? You know, so they want everyone uh, affirmatively agreeing to move to a next topic or, th or things like that. Wow. Um, I like that. But anyway, um, we're here to learn from you, but you'll be interested. No, 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 in, that's good. That's a good uh, resource. The culture at, uh, at, at zero. Um, Absolutely. And, and a lot of what you're saying is reminding me about my conversation with Jamie Burst. Um, right, what about, what about trust? Uh, Lorraine, you want to, you want to yeah. uh, sure. uh, yeah, so, say more about that? Fill, flesh that yes, out? absolutely. So trust is the bedrock of all teams. And if, if you've read anything around the five dysfunctions of a team, um, Lencioni's book, he talks about trust. Everybody has a different lens of trust, but he sort of focuses on, for the purpose of, of shared language, he focuses on trust being in the areas of reliability, acceptance, openness, and congruence. Um, so trust is a key thing of being able to create that within teams and being able to talk about what's my lens of trust, is it that you, sh that you are reliable, you deliver what you say you're gonna deliver, you set up regular Zoom meetings in this disruption, you, you make yourself accessible. Somebody else may have a, a lens of trust around acceptance. You know, you're accepting me in this disruption, in this pandemic, you're accepting my circumstances of home, at home and all it is that I need to juggle kids, elder care, all those kinds of things. So everybody has a different lens, but it all sort of bedrocks under trust and we all have people in our lives who we can kind of sort of think about when we think of the word trust who naturally comes to mind and when we're in workshop Catherine and I typically will say close your eyes and think of somebody who you when we say trust somebody who comes to mind and it and it could be a leader it could be a family member it could be a friend but almost undoubtedly uh, acceptance reliability openness not so much congruence, because congruence really kind of wraps up all three, but those usually come to mind. And then we really just have a conversation about how do you build trust? How is trust quickly broken? Um, you know, are you somebody who trusts people initially uh, when you meet them or, or do you have them earn trust? You know, so it's a really good conversation um, around how to do that during this time. And so part of building trust for teams right now would be, you know, creating, having a conversation about what do you need? What is it that you need? Um, how can I support you? Those are all embedded in trust. Um, one of the things I often say is what should I stop doing, start doing, continue doing? Um, it's leaning in and saying, you know, I want a trusting relationship here and how do we build that? Because trust is something you build. It's like, it's like any investment. The more you invest and put trust moments, trust exchanges 
sort of in the trust kit or whatever, yeah. the more you can tap it. Um, right. And if I've got a long-term relationship with Catherine of 20 years and she does one thing that appears to break trust, I'm going to continue that relationship because she has such a deep investment with me versus somebody new who really hasn't taken the time to invest. So this is a time for teams to really build trust and um, create that foundation and be reliable as much as you can in being accessible during this pandemic and being available, answering questions, creating connection, being accepting of people's circumstances at home, a lot of those kinds of things. And of course, all this that we're saying applies in leadership generally. And generally, but it, yeah. But certainly, we're, we're in the midst of this pandemic. Absolutely. It makes sense to ground it in, in our current reality, but it applies way beyond Absolutely. This, this situation. Catherine, earlier you talked about, uh, you mentioned listen with compassion. Yes. Could you yes. flesh that out, please? I love that. Yeah, I would, I would, I would <laughs> love to do, if you will allow us, a little role play yeah. with Lorraine around the <laughs> levels of listening. Okay. You have okay. a, you obviously have something planned. How could I? How could I? We do. <laughs> we would love to do this. Okay. There's um uh with um acknowledgement. Should I leave the room? Should I? No. Nope, you the can room? you can oh. hang yeah. in here. Okay. <laughs> there are three levels of listening, and the first level I like to say it's all about me. It's when I'm listening to you and I'm busy understanding its impact on me. Whatever you're saying. Yeah. The second level of listening, it's all about you. I'm listening to understand the impact and the uh, inference and the effect of what you're saying and the story you're telling has on you. The third level is called global listening. And it's when we're kind of, it's beyond you and me. And it's the kind of listening that a comedian has to do to read the audience. There's a sense of the energy in the room. It's like beyond the human individual. Yeah. So Lorraine and I would, one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, people want to give a bad rap to level one listening, but it's a really important thing. If you're giving me an assignment, I need to be thinking, can I do it? Do I have the time? What is my capacity? I have to be thinking about its impact on me specifically. But if you are telling me something that's important to you and you're expressing a piece of yourself, I need to be listening in level two listening. I need to make sure I'm focused on you and the impact that what you're saying and your storytelling has. And that's where the listening with compassion comes through. Okay. And Lorraine and I would like to do a little role play where we show you what it feels like to listen at level one and then to listen at level two. Absolutely. Um, Catherine, can I just make a suggestion? Move, your, move your mouthpiece a little, a little below, just a little below your mouth. Yeah, that's good. Okay. That some of the some of the consonants we say like t, you know, and it, it breaks up just a little bit. I, I think it'll Great. you'll less you'll aspirate less air it, right into the right into the microphone, but, but we can still we can still hear you. Okay, please. Great. Okay. So Lorraine is gonna tell me a story. What do you want to tell? And I'll start with level one listening when it's all about me, what she's saying. Hey, Catherine, guess what? Last year, I went on this fabulous trip to Israel. It was something I had been wanting to do for so long last June, and it was incredible. Israel has always fascinated me. I, it, it's yeah. incredible. I'm so jealous that you could go. Yeah, yeah. I went with a group from my church, and it was an amazing experience, and I did this whole holy tour, and there were all these other church groups there. Well, you know, that would have been so cool if I had been there because, you know, that means so much to me too, to be part of community like that. Yeah, I felt like I was in community, uh, Catherine, and, you know, so many historical sites and uh, the upper room and, you know, going to the temples and Masada. It was, it was incredible to see. Yeah, I don't even know what half of those things are that you're talking about. Okay, we get, yeah, we get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so now we're gonna flop it, was, it. Catherine, that was good. You know what you tried, you tried to turn it, <laughs> I, I wish I could have been part of that community. Like, you know, like using the word community makes you a, a better listener. You know, I said community, right. you know, I said heart. You didn't right. say, but I, really, I said the word. So I'm, I guess I'm a, I'm a level two listener. <laughs> All right. yeah. I, I like that. There's a little twist. I wish I could have been part of your community. No, you didn't say your community. But you yeah. know it. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. We got it. Go ahead, please. Okay. So Lorraine's going to start the story again and I'll give level two listening. Okay. 
Catherine, last year I went on this fabulous trip to Israel and it was amazing last June and it was on my bucket list, something I had wanted to do and it really was just quite a spiritual experience for me. Oh I, can, I can just see what it meant to you in your face. You light up when you talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I saw holy sites that I had read about for years and just to be in these places, Garden of Gethsemane and all these special places was pretty incredible. Being in Bethlehem and the shepherd's field, it was it was quite touching. I, at times, I just, I had to pinch myself and realize, am I really here? Absolutely. I can hear how it enriched you just in your voice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for showing interest, Catherine. I really appreciate that. Just your, your leaning in just makes me almost relive the experience again. So yeah. it was great. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> just short Con little example. Contrast is clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sometimes say that to people, you know, I can tell, I can tell how your voice, you know, I, I, I can tell in your voice or I can see how your face lights up, you know, if I'm having lunch with someone, yeah, well, I can yeah. tell how you're, you know, how animated you get when yeah, yeah. Yeah. we're bored with these the other percent of our conversation. But uh, when you, because <laughs> I, I tend to do that. Lot, I put a lot of people off. That's why I have to do it. If, if, if I don't do it virtual, you know, and a lot of times I don't even do the video. No, um, but um, <laughs> Um, no, but you, you can see in animation, yeah. you can see people's eyes light up, you yeah. can see their arms start to move, their hand, you know, you can see a uh, smile come on their face. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it, uh, there are things we talk about that brighten us instantly. And yeah, it, it, that's being and very, these are good skills. Being very empath I'm sorry. Empathic. I was just being mm -hmm. very yes. emp empathic to recognize. Um, okay. You want to take us to level yeah. three, right? What, did you want to no, say? No, I'm not. We're not. We're, we're not going to show you yeah, level three. Okay. Um, I, I but I do want to comedy, point so out. I'll tell you about. I do stand up comedy. I'll tell you about level three. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. It, really, it really sucks when nobody's laughing at your jokes. Um, yeah. Thankfully, that doesn't happen too often. But uh, you get a sense of a room because you use that example of of a stand up yep. comic uh, reading the room. Um, you know when it's not going well. Um, you know when a certain type of joke didn't doesn't do well don't do more of those you know don't don't try to push it yep. well maybe just that one you know i'll try another one just like it now you know it's time to move on tell a story about <laughs> yep. seventh grade you know tell a tell a vulnerability story or something and you know yeah but today um, i want to say the else? reason yeah. that we talk about this and we spend time on it is because if you don't know your options when you're listening you can't use them um intentionally right Okay, so there are like times a, when uh, you again. need to be listening on level one, and there are times when you should be listening on level two. And we encourage you to be aware of your conversations, to be sensitive to that. And this is even true in your home with your family, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was just going to add, so both Catherine and I are leadership coaches. Mm -hmm. and, and when we are coaching a client, we really need to hone into level three, because yeah. level three is really looking at not just a smile, not just the energy, but it really is going in that somatic uh, vein of where you're um, really sensing the whole body and sensing the energy behind a conversation. And you can sense when somebody is not saying something and when they're maybe shielding or whatever, but it's deeper listening where we as coaches have to really, really be centered and grounded in our listening, because it really is full body listening to somebody. Right. Intuition is a piece of Yeah, intuition is a big piece, yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, all right, we still have a couple minutes left. Um, you, you had some tools and approaches. Who wants to? Who so wants to do you mind, Catherine, if I mention a few things? Yep, go that, for it. That I had. So when I was thinking about this interview, I, I thought about some things um, of that people and leaders um, and team members can do. And I had a few things here, reframing. You know, here's an opportunity to rethink how to frame this disruption, seeing it as an opportunity to recreate, to co-create together, and to give birth to, to, to some new things. So reframe, balance to leaders. Try not to overload your team with too many tasks or projects because remember, they're juggling their own family, childcare, self-care, they're juggling anxiety, depression, they're adjusting to a new normal. Balance. Number three, be creative. It's an opportunity to think out of the box. Something new. Again, this is all sort of glasses half full versus half empty kind of mindset. Uh, fourth, servant leadership. 
which requires just what we were just talking about, listening, accepting, being present, being adaptable, and leading with head and heart, heart being important. Flexibility, flex a bit with the deadlines. Focus on the big picture and not that just current deadline that, that is required. So that will cause a leader us to expand our comfort zone a little bit so that we're not so type A, like I want that deadline and it needs to be done right now. And then the last one is so important in a time like this, but it's so important when there is no pandemic and it means yeah. the world to people based on um, my years of being a leader in an organization and that is saying thanks. Say thanks. Uh, it makes a difference. It shows you care. Um, um, you can never say it too often. Uh, and thank the team for navigating this, this new unknown uh, territory. Thank them for the completion of a project. Thank them for just the smallest and the biggest things. Mm -hmm. And it'll go a long way and it will increase engagement. It will uh, shift a culture and it can make a big difference. So, and thanks to you, Tony, for yes. having us. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Is that is that the end that you had planned, or Catherine? Anything you want to add? Thank you, Catherine. No, nope. I think she summed it up beautifully. Okay. <laughs> Lead okay. with your heart and curiosity. That's right. right. Well, then, thanks to thanks to each of you. Um, as I said, I'm I'm glad you're well and safe, and thank you for sharing. Thank you very very much, um, Lorraine Gore, uh, principal of Lead with Heart, the great uh, name, uh, company name, obviously based in <laughs> Leave. Um, and uh, Catherine Hyde, Senior Director of Digital Engagement at Enterprise Community Partners. And thank you for being with 20 NTC Nonprofit Tech. What? This is Nonprofit Radio. What I mean to say is thank you <laughs> with Nonprofit Radio coverage of 20 NTC. Um, we're sponsored by uh, Cougar Mountain Software, which I'm grateful for. Denali Fund is their complete accounting solution made for nonprofits. Tony.ma slash Cougar Mountain for a free 60-day trial. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. My pleasure.